Welcome to the Lady Audio Podcast. Today's show is brought to you by Crystal Meditations. Crystal Meditations shares soundscapes at the original Sophagio frequencies for self-healing and the orbital frequencies of the planets of our solar system. Please visit LadyAudio.com to listen, subscribe to YouTube, and learn more. Hello everyone and welcome to the Lady Audio Radio Show. We are here today with Rob Pelican of the musical project Deanima. Deanima's music is alternative, it's indie rock with goth and a classic new wave kind of a sound. Um, and there are also some acoustic elements that create a really great grounding feeling throughout. Um, Deanima's newest album is called Mirage, and I'm going to be asking Rob about what the songs are about and how he goes about recording. So Rob, welcome to the show. Hi, really great to be here. Um, I wanted to first ask you, which instruments do you play? So I mainly play um, a 12-string guitar and a keyboard. Those are the two main instruments, and then um, then I have a bunch of different um, percussive um, things to jangle with, and um, I have a violin that I don't use very often, but sometimes I'll use it to, like I'll um, just make up something. I can't really play it very well, but just to add a little texture to things sometimes. That's cool. Um... So on the album, you are playing all of the instruments. Yes, that's right. Okay, that's cool. Um, okay, so I want to get right into uh, the songs. So my first question is about the first song, which is Everything Falls Apart. Mm -hmm. And what is this song about? Okay, this song is about um, the end of a relationship. Um, I had a relationship end about three months ago. And... And this song came to me like this sort of chorus. Um, at first, it sounded kind of countryish, and um, like, "What can you do when everything falls apart?" Like, kind of a, yeah. kind of a simple rhyming kind of thing. And and so it it's it's got kind of an upbeat feel to it. And even though it's the lyrics are sad, but that dichotomy, um, it was kind of like therapy recording it because it was kind of almost joking with myself or giving myself sort of a wink and a nod, like you're gonna be okay, but you know, you can sing about the breakup at the same time.
the guitar has this uh, really interesting wobble effect. So when you're first put on the album, you're kind of immediately immersed in this like wobbly guitar effect. How did you get that effect and uh, why did you decide on that type of a guitar effect? Yeah, that's the, the effect that reminds me of kind of a twangy song. And um, that's what the song felt like when it was coming to me. So I wanted to represent it that way um, to give it a little bit of a twang feel. And um, it's basically just a, um, an effect that I just ran the guitar through. I didn't have to do much to it. It, it wobbled all by itself. <laughs> <laughs> so the guitar that you used on that, was that the 12 string or was that an electric guitar? Um, yeah, it was a 12 string. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And also um, that the electric guitar part that comes in towards the middle and then yeah. again towards the end, yeah. what kind of guitar is that? And that's just a basic electric guitar um, fed through an effects channel. And, uh, you know, I had a bunch to choose from and just went through them all until I found the one that sounded right for it. Oh, cool. For that song. What color is the guitar? It's black. Okay. Figures. <laughs> um, the next song um, that I want to talk about is Come On and Dance. And mm. I'm pretty sure we got to hear this song, or you know, Craig and I got to hear this song before it was released. You sent it to us. Yeah, yeah. And um, so about this song, when I first heard it, I, was, I thought... This is really, it's like a simple song. Like the song mm -hmm. structure is really simple. Yeah. And yet there are all these little like different musical elements going on throughout that you don't quite hear at first until you hear it, the song a couple of times. Mm. So I wanted to ask you, um, uh, what was your inspiration for this song? in its simplicity, but also with all of the intricacies. Yeah. Um, so this song came um, from a very vivid dream that I had. And when I was recording it, I wanted to represent how it sounded in the dream as closely as possible because it had a very specific vibe and, and atmosphere to it in the dream. Like it was kind of big and expansive and simple, but, but really infectious. And so I just started uh, experimenting with um, my MIDI keyboard and plugging it through the different, just trying different sounds on it. And when I'd find one that, you know, kind of had like maybe a chimey thing to create sort of a celebratory atmosphere, I would use that. And then...
there's some strings on it and uh, yeah just trying to layer it but not overdo it and try to give it that feeling that that it had in the dream when I heard it there and I think it came out pretty pretty close to the original <laughs> so what was yeah. the what was the dream well the dream was actually um, uh, the band love and rockets that I know you're familiar with and they were having they were having a comeback show concert in the dream and it was this big outdoor amphitheater just beautiful with like marble um, it almost looked like a like a brand new greek kind of marbly um, outdoor venue and and it was announced that they were about to go on stage and so so me and a whole bunch of people were like kind of rushing towards it and and then as we were like rushing towards the stage the music came on and it, there was like surround sound speakers and it had this come on and come on up and dance and it was exactly how everybody felt yes we're coming up and we're gonna dance and so it was a beautiful dream to wake up to <laughs> that's cool that's a really neat dream i've had several like music dreams like that before so yeah you wake up and you're like oh man i don't forget this i gotta bring this out into yeah. this reality yeah well, that's cool. I'm glad that the inspiration, I'm glad to hear about the inspiration for that song. I'm always, I'm, I always enjoy hearing stories like that. I feel like mm. the song came from the ether somewhere, mm -hmm. you know, it's really cool. Yeah. It's like a co-creative process a lot of the time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, next song I wanted to talk about is The Children of Softening Madness. Mm -hmm. What is this song about? This song started with the title. It just, um, I think I was partying with some friends and and uh, sometimes we'll just, you know, especially my best friend, um, we'll be talking and, and we'll just start going off on ideas and he's a poet, so he, he's really good with words. And, and at some point that saying, the children of softening madness came out. I'm like, oh my God, that would make such a good song. That's a great title. So I just went with it and it's about um, kind of, um, so it's, it's referencing me and like who I would consider my tribe, like my best friends or people I know. And it's about, this, it's about a spiritual path that we're all on. That is the kind of thing where you can only get to the light by going through the darkness. So that's why it kind of has a, uh, a dark feel to it. And 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 it's and you can go mad when you're dealing with the shadow self but the madness is softening so we're the children of softening madness because we're making a little bit of progress through our walk of the dark side <laughs> nice yeah. nice um that song has a really um familiar yet unique drum sound the drum machine sound. What did you use to get the drum machine sound? Um, I was just flipping through the different um, the different drum programs that were already pre-programmed, and then what I do is is I'll find the one that sounds like a good fit for the song, and then I'll manipulate it in the editing software, and you know, like maybe take away the cymbal or add some reverb. Um, add echo take away this or that until it until it gets to the right sound so in that one i wanted to have it be a supportive drum track but not not be overwhelming to it because it's it's more about the rhythm in that song like the sound of the guitar and the feel of the voice over layering it A lot of us stars 
Where you end and I begin. Uh, first of all, it's a very pretty song, Thank and you. the you're welcome. <laughs> and the vocals are really good on that mm. on that song. What was your process for recording the vocals? Did you do anything special beforehand, or um, like how did you get into the vibe of the song? Because it sounds like you're just right there. Yeah, it's a very intimate song. Um, it's a it's a love song, um, exploring that that space between two people, two partners. You know where where you and and I begin is where I and and you begin, and so it ex- explores that. And and it's such a, a to me, it's a very delicate, um, almost fragile um, subject because where do you actually end and begin between the other person? So that's why I wanted to have the vocals be prominent um, on you know left and right ear if you're wearing headphones. And um, yeah, just uh, almost almost to a, to a whisper equality, but, but clear enough so that so that it's really felt, you know where, where where the lyrics are coming from, which is, which is ultimately um, you know deep love. Yeah, there is a place where you and I
to get into those types of spaces. I know because when I'm trying to put down my own vocals for my own stuff, um, it's um, it can be really challenging to get into that really, how do you say, subtle kind mm-hmm. of a place mm-hmm. enough to the point where you're still singing, but you're very present just in the moment and really feeling the poetry of the song. Mm -hmm. So that's why I wanted to ask you, how did you prepare for getting into that space? I know it it, it can be easy and it can just come naturally, but other times it's... It kind of comes naturally to me. Um, that that's actually probably the easiest way for me to sing. It's, it's the expressive stuff that's more challenging. So, um, that that wasn't um that difficult for me and then um especially once i started to layer it and harmonize with myself then then it got more even more comfortable there's another um part another element in that song um and it's the harmonica who played uh, the harmonica yeah that's me too that's you too. yeah i'm, I'm the that's one cool. man band <laughs> Yeah, I love using harmonica sometimes um, just to, again, it's just like using the twang and everything falls apart. Having the harmonica there kind of gives it a feeling like you're sitting around the fire, you know, and you're just like listening to the song really closely. Yeah, it's a really <laughs> intimate song. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, what, is there anything else about the album that you would like to talk about? Well, um, so the title Mirage is about you know, basically like a mirage, like you're in the desert and you're, you're thirsty and you think that you see the lake that's going to quench your thirst, but you get there and it turns out it's a mirage. So that's the metaphor for um, the end of a relationship that I was in. And, you know, always, always thinking that I was there at, at the, the quench of the love or, or the dream of, of, you know, soulmate to soulmate kind of thing, you know, like what everybody wants. And then, but getting there time and again and finding out that, it's actually a mirage. So it's like the idea versus reality. So it's kind of a lot of the songs explore that emotion. Um, there's a, let's see what, one, one of the songs is a remake of a song I did back in 1995 called um, like, or I think it's called whales do whales do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was really fun to re-record because I didn't have very good equipment back then, and um, I was really proud of how that came out. And um, yeah, it's just you know the whole record is like a 
big extended therapy session for me and you know when i'm <laughs> making it and when i'm hearing it back and editing and that kind of thing so it was really really good uh, thing to do you know in, in the midst of heartbreak that where you can't see the end of how long it's going to be or you know and you're facing loneliness then you haven't looked at that feeling for years and so it, it's uh it helps it's a it's a blessing actually to to be able to you know have um connection to to a muse or, or to the universe through through music yeah, I agree that music is definitely a lifesaver when it comes to just facing any type of life's challenges. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I was going to say something and now I can't remember what it was. Yeah, I'm trying to remember all the songs because there's actually quite a few on there. There are quite a few songs on there. These are the ones that really stood out to me, though, so okay. that's why I wanted to touch base on, on these ones. Oh, yeah, I remember what it was. I wanted to ask you, so you play keyboards. What type of a keyboard do you play? Is it is it a, a real keyboard, or is it just a MIDI interface? MIDI interface. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I used to, just, I used to play an actual keyboard, um, but... Um, the sounds just it, it wasn't a very good keyboard and so I finally just broke down and got a basic MIDI keyboard and used that to channel the different sounds through I used to live in a house that had a real piano a stand-up piano and that was wonderful so some of my previous albums that I haven't uploaded yet but eventually I'll upload have real piano exploration and there's no beating that sound it's pretty wonderful do you plan on releasing a new album this year oh yeah for sure yeah yeah i'm, I'm going to be um uploading um or releasing um basically like my back catalog and some some of it um there's there's quite a few albums i pretty much do about one album a year sometimes even two um and and so, so some of it's good enough, like as it is, um, uh, other albums I, I have to re-edit and try to bring up to like, like more of a, um, like a quality of, of sound that it sounds okay to listen to without manipulating the original product. So this year is going to be about, um, releasing the back catalog and then along the way, it'll be inevitable. I know that especially being single, it's way, <laughs> way easier to be prolific, so you know, what should I do tonight? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I had to start forcing myself and actually I think both Craig and I have both started having to force ourselves to practice and stuff to make sure that we're, we're staying, staying mm -hmm. practiced and, and, and recording and everything. Yeah. So and writing, songwriting and gosh, there's just so much work that goes into it. There's so much work that goes into it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, and I'm I'm just kind of making it up as I go, you know. I'm just yeah. like, um, my la last relationship, she was a musician. She was actually really good at um, producing and editing, and so I learned a lot from her with, as far as the whole digital world and how to how to use that interface to create the final product. And so I, I definitely owe her a debt of uh, gratitude. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. The only other thing I would add is uh, the song. Um, Come On and Dance is um, currently on the um, NV89 um, playlist in Reno for, for their, their local, um, they play, they, they play a, somebody local to Reno, which also actually includes Las Vegas or sometimes like Truckee, um, I think once an hour. So about every four to six weeks, that song gets played from That's that cool. album. Yeah. So just throwing that out there too that's cool yeah <laughs> nv89 they're they're a really great ra um radio station and uh it's available online too so you can listen yeah. online as well not just locally so it's good. yeah 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 they support local artists which is awesome yeah and i want to ask craig if he had any questions for you no it's fine 
Okay. All right. Well, cool. I guess that's it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. This Thank was you. really great. This is my first interview ever. This is my very first in person <laughs> interview. All of the other ones have been by phone or Skype. So nice. Well, thank you for being my first interviewer, and uh, it was great to be your first in person. <laughs> yeah, it's actually a little easier to do it in person. Oh, it's great. Yeah, because it's it's like a conversation. Yeah, you know, it's it's just it's more real. Yeah. <laughs>